The Nokali riots, were a series of semi-organized massacres, rapes, abductions and forced conversions of Hindus to Islam and looting and arson of Hindu properties perpetrated by the Muslim community in the districts of Nokali in the Chittagong Division of Bengal now in, Bangladesh in October to November 1946, a year before India's independence from British rule. It affected the areas under the Ramganj, Begumganj, Raipur, Lakshmipur, Chagalnaya and Sandwip police stations in Nokali district and the areas under the Hajiganj, Faridganj, Chandpur, Laksham and Shodagram police stations in Tipura district, a total area of more than 2,000 square miles. The massacre of the Hindu population started on 10 October, on the day of Kojagari Lakshmi Puja, and continued unabated for about a week. It is estimated that a minimum of more than 5,000 Hindus were killed, hundreds of Hindu women were raped and thousands of Hindu men and women were forcibly converted to Islam. Around 50,000 to 75,000 survivors were sheltered in temporary relief camps in Komila, Chandpur, Agartala and other places. Around 50,000 Hindus remained marooned in the affected areas under the strict surveillance of the Muslims, where the administration had no say. In some areas, Hindus had to obtain permits from the Muslim leaders in order to travel outside their villages. The forcibly converted Hindus were coerced to give written declarations that they had converted to Islam of their own free will. Sometimes they were confined in others' houses and only allowed to be in their own house when an official party came for inspection. According to Dinesh Chandra, Hindus were forced to pay subscriptions to the Muslim League and Jizya, the protection tax paid by dhimmis in an Islamic state. Haran Chandra Ghosh Chaudhary, the only Hindu representative to the Bengal Legislative Assembly from the district of Nokali, described the incidents as the organized fury of the Muslim mob. Sayama Prasad Mukherjee, the former vice chancellor of the University of Calcutta and the former finance minister of Bengal, dismissed the argument that the Nokali incidents were ordinary communal riots. He described the events as a planned and concerted attack by the minority community on the majority community. Mohandas Gandhi camped in Nokali for four months and toured the district in a mission to restore peace and communal harmony. However, the peace mission failed to restore confidence among the survivors, who could not be permanently rehabilitated in their villages. In the meantime, the Congress party leadership accepted the partition of India and the peace mission and other relief camps were abandoned. The majority of the survivors migrated to West Bengal, Tripura and Assam. Prelude Communal tensions in Nokali started soon after the Great Calcutta riots between Muslims and Hindus. Though it was quiet, the tension had been building up. During the six weeks leading up to the disturbances in Nokali, Eastern Command headquarters in Kolkata received reports indicating tension in the rural areas of Nokali and Chittagong districts. Village poets and balladeers composed anti-Hindu poems and rhymes, which they recited and sang in market places and other public gathering places. Topic. Eid al-Fitr violence On 29 August, the day of Eid al-Fitr, the tension escalated into violence. A rumor spread that the Hindus had accumulated weapons. A group of Hindu fishermen were attacked with deadly weapons while fishing in the Feni River. One of them was killed and two seriously injured. Another group of nine Hindu fishermen from Charuria were severely assaulted with deadly weapons. Seven of them were admitted to hospital. Devi Prasanna Guha, the son of a congressman of Babupur village under the Ramganj police station, was murdered. One of his brothers and a servant were assaulted. The Congress office in front of their house was set on fire. Chandra Kumar Karmakar of Manpura was killed near Jamalpur. Jamini Day, a hotel worker, was killed near Goshbag. Ashu Sen of Devisingpur was severely beaten up at Tajumiarhat at Char Parvati. Rajkumar Choudhury of Banspara was severely assaulted on his way home. All the properties of six or seven Hindu families of Kanor Char were looted. At Karpara, a Muslim gang armed with deadly weapons entered the house of Jadav Majumdar and looted properties worth 1,500 rupees. Nikul Majumdar was assaulted. The houses of Prasanna Mohan Chakraborty of Tatarkhil, Nabhan Chandra Nath of Miralipur, and Radha Sharan Nath of Latipur were looted. Five members of the Nath family of Latipur were injured, the temple of the family deity of Harendra Ghosh of Raipur was desecrated, a calf was butchered and thrown inside the temple. 
The Shiva temple of Dr. Jadunath Majumdar of Chandipur was desecrated in a similar manner. The household shrines of Najendra Majumdar and Rajkumar Choudhury of Dadpur were desecrated and the idols were stolen. The Durga images of Ishwar Chandra Padak of Kathori, Kitareshwar Chakraborty of Murkachar, Ananta Kumarda of Angrapara and Prasanna Mohan Chakraborty of Tatarkil were broken. Communal propaganda In 1937, Ghulam Sarwar Husseini, the scion of a Muslim PIR family, was elected to the Bengal Legislative Assembly on a Krishak Praja party ticket. However, in the 1946 elections, he lost to a Muslim League candidate. Ghulam Sarwar's father and grandfather were pious Muslims and had led lives of penance. Their family happened to be the hereditary Qadims at the Diara Sharif in Shiampur, revered as a holy place by both Muslims and Hindus. After the Direct Action Day riots in Kolkata, Husseini began to deliver provocative speeches, inciting the Muslim masses to take revenge for the Kolkata riots. In some places Hindu shops began to be boycotted. In the Ramganj and Begumganj police station areas, the Muslim boatmen refused to ferry Hindu passengers. In the first week of September, Muslims looted the Hindu shops in Sahapur market. Hindus were harassed and molested when they were returning to their native villages from Kolkata to spend the puja holidays. From 2 October onwards there were frequent instances of stray killings, theft and looting. <laughs> <laughs> Events According to Governor Burroughs, the immediate occasion for the outbreak of the disturbances was the looting of a bazaar market in Ramganj police station following the holding of a mass meeting and a provocative speech by Ghulam Sarwar Hussain. This included attacks on the place of business of Surendra Nath Bose and Rajendra Lal Roy Choudhury, the former president of the Nokali Bar and a prominent Hindu Mahasabha leader. Violence The riots started on 10 October, the day of Kojagari Lakshmi Puja, when the Bengali Hindus were involved in puja activities. Ghulam Sarwar instructed the Muslim masses to march towards the Sahapur market. Another Muslim League leader, Qasim, also arrived at the Sahapur market with his private army, then known as Qasim or Faz. After that Qasim's army marched to Narayanpur to the Zamindari office of Surendranath Basu. They were joined there by another Muslim mob from Kalyanagar. Some of the Muslim tenants also joined the mob and attacked the Zamindari office. On the 11th of October, the private army of Golam Sarwar, known as the Mayar Faz, attacked the residence of Rajendralal Roychaudhuri, the president of the Nokali Bar Association and the Nokali district Hindu Mahasabha. At that time Swami Triambakananda of Bharat Sevashram Sangha was staying at their house as a guest. Roy Chowdhury fended off the mob from his terrace with his rifle for the entire day. At nightfall, when they retreated, he sent the Swami and his family members to safety. The next day the mob attacked again. Rajendralal Roy Chowdhury's severed head was presented to Golam Sarwar on a platter and his two daughters were given to two of his trusted generals. According to Suketa Kriplani, Rajendralal Roy Chowdhury had followed the footsteps of Shivaji and Guru Gobind Singh and became a martyr, defending his faith and family honour. Acharya Kripalani, a staunch believer in non-violence, held that the resistance offered by Rajendralal Roy Chowdhury and his family was the nearest approach to non-violence. After three months Mohandas Gandhi, while touring Nokali, visited their gutted house. On the 11th of January 1947, the corpses of the Roy Chowderies were exhumed from a swamp in Azampur and brought before Mohandas Gandhi's prayer assembly at Lamchar High School. After the prayers the corpses were cremated according to Hindu rites. On 12 October, the residence of Chittaranjan Dutta Ray Chowdhury at Shayestagunj under the Raipur police station was attacked by a Muslim mob. Qasim's private army attacked the Das family of Goparbag near Sampara Market under the Ramganj police station. The Das family were Qasim's immediate neighbour. The Chaudhuri family of Nokola village under the Ramganj police station were also attacked by a Muslim mob. The attackers resorted to murder, loot and arson. Another Muslim mob attacked the residents of Yashoda Pal and Bharat Buyan at Gobindapur under Ramganj police station. 
Between Amishapara and Satgarya, the residences of the Baumaks and the Pals were totally destroyed by fire. In Nandigram, Golam Sarwar's private army burnt the Nag residence, the post office, and the school founded by Ramanikanta Nag. The Hindus from the nearby areas had taken shelter in the Nag residence and initially the police protected them, repulsing the first attacks. The attackers then resorted to indiscriminate looting in the village. On 13 October, at 12 noon, a mob of 200–250 Muslims armed with deadly weapons attacked the Hindus in Changargaon, 1,500 mons of paddy were burnt and all the temples were destroyed. The Hindu women were stripped of their shanka and cinder. The men were forced to perform the namaz. On 14 October, Jogendra Chandra Das, the MLA from Chandpur, Tipura, wrote to Jogendra Nath Mandal stating that thousands of scheduled caste Hindus had been attacked in Ramganj police station area in Nokali. Their houses were being looted and set on fire and they were being forcibly converted to Islam. According to eyewitnesses, the attackers used petrol to set the houses on fire. In the remote island of Sandwip, which had no motor cars, petrol was imported from the mainland to set the houses on fire. According to Rakesh Batabial, the use of petrol and kerosene indicates the premeditated and organized nature of the attacks. In Sandwip, revolutionary freedom fighter Lalmahan Sen was killed when he tried to resist a Muslim mob from killing the Hindus. Violence broke out in the Ramganj police station area in the northern Nokali district on 10 October 1946. The violence unleashed was described as the organized fury of the Muslim mob. It soon engulfed the neighboring police stations of Raipur, Lakshmipur, Bagumganj and Sandeep in Nokali, and Faridganj, Hajaganj, Chandpur, Lakshman and Chudagram in Tipura. As per Gandhi and Ashoka Gupta's report during Mahatma Gandhi's visit to the area, at least 2,000 Hindus were forced to change their religion to Islam, six were forced to marry by force and one was murdered. However, the official estimate was 200. Jashoda Ranjan Das, one of the landlord of Nokali Nauri, was killed during the riot. He succeeded in saving his wife and children, sending them to West Bengal with the help of local Muslims, and stayed with his brothers in law. A few months later, with the help of Mahatma Gandhi, the bodies were found. <laughs> Forcible conversions Village after village was forcibly converted to Islam. The men were forced to wear skullcaps and grow beards. The women were stripped of their shanka and cinder and forced to recite the kalma. Mulavis visited their homes and imparted Islamic teachings. Ashoka Gupta, whose husband was then a judge serving in Chittagong, was among the first outsiders to reach Nokali to provide relief. When the news of the killings and forced conversions appeared in the news for the first time, the Star of India, the newspaper patronized by the Muslim League, denied any incidents of forcible conversion. However, Hussein Shahid Surawardi, while answering a question from Durendranath Datta in the Assembly, stated that there had been 9,895 cases of forcible conversion in Tipura. The exact figure was not known for Nokali, but it ran into thousands. Edward Skinner Simpson stated in his report that 22,550 cases of forcible conversion took place in the three police station areas of Faridganj, Chandpur and Hajiganj in the district of Tipura. Dr. Taj ul Islam Hashmi concluded that the number of Hindu women raped or converted was probably many times the number of Hindus killed. According to M. A. Khan, at least 95% of the Hindus of Nokali were converted to Islam. According to Justice G. D. Khosla, the entire Hindu population of Nokali were robbed of all they possessed and then forcibly converted to Islam. Official developments On 13 October, Kamini Kumar Dutta, the leader of the Indian National Congress in the Bengal Legislative Council, paid a visit of inquiry to Nokali in his personal capacity during which interviewed Abdullah, the district superintendent of police. On 15, he met the Minister of Civil Supplies of the Government of Bengal, who was on his way to Nokali. On his return he communicated with the Home Department of the Interim Government seeking effective remedial measures and stating that it was impossible for anyone from outside to enter the disturbed areas without risking his life. He further stated that the authorities were anxious to hush up the entire episode from public inspection. 
No force had been sent to the disturbed areas till 14 October. Hussein Shahid Surawardi, the Prime Minister of Bengal, held a press conference in Kolkata on 16 October at which he acknowledged the forcible conversion, plunder, and looting of Hindus in Nokali. While insisting that the incidents had stopped, he said he had no idea why the incidents had occurred. He stated that it had become difficult for troops to move in because the canals had been jammed, bridges were damaged, and roads blocked. He contemplated dropping printed appeals and warnings from the air instead of rushing in troops. On 18 October, Frederick Burroughs, the Governor of Bengal, along with Surawardi and the Inspector General of Police for Bengal, visited Feni by plane and flew over the affected areas. Later, the Government of Bengal sent an official team to Nokali and Tipura to assess the situation. The team consisted of Jogendra Nath Mandal the newly appointed member in charge of law in the interim government, Shamsuddin Ahmed, the Minister of Labour in the Bengal government, Abul Hashim, the Secretary of Bengal Provincial Muslim League, Fazlur Rahman, Hamidul Haq Chowdhury, Moazem Hossein, A. Malik and B. Wahidutsaman. On 19 October, Javatram Bhagwandas Kripalani, the President-elect of the Indian National Congress, Sarat Chandra Bose, the member in charge of works, mines and power in the interim government, Surendra Mohan Ghosh, the President of the Bengal Provincial Congress Committee, Suketa Kripalani, Major General A. C. Chatterjee, Kumar Dibendra Lal Khan and the editor of Anandabazar Patrika flew to Chittagong at the suggestion of Mohandas Gandhi. On the way they made a brief stop at Komila, where thousands of Hindu victims reported experiencing atrocities. In Chittagong, they met Frederick Burroughs, the Governor of Bengal, who assured them that according to Surawardi, the Prime Minister of Bengal, everything was peaceful and orderly. He explained the rape and molestation of Hindu women as natural because they were more attractive than Muslim women. On 21 October, Arthur Henderson, the Undersecretary of State for India and Burma, read a report from the Governor of Bengal in the House of Commons that stated that the number of casualties was expected to be in the three figure range. Surat Chandra Bose challenged the statement, saying that 400 Hindus had been killed in a single incident at the office and residence of landlord Surendranath Bose. On 25 October, at a mass meeting in New Delhi presided over by Suresh Chandra Majumdar, the managing director of the Anandabazar Patrika and the Hindustan Standard, a resolution was passed demanding the immediate recall of the governor of Bengal, the dismissal of the Muslim League ministry and intervention of the centre. At a press conference in Kolkata on 26 October, Lt. Gen. Frr. Booker, the GOC of Eastern Command, stated that it was impossible to estimate how long it would take to restore the confidence of the affected people in the government. Topic relief operations When the news of the events in Nokali reached the outside world, Indian social, religious and political institutions came forward for relief and rescue operations. Notable among them were Bharat Sevashram Sangha, Hindu Mahasabha, the Indian National Congress, the Communist Party of India, the Indian National Army, Prabhartak Sangha, Abhay Ashram, Arya Samaj and Gita Press. Thirty relief organizations and six medical missions performed relief work in Nokali. In addition there were 20 camps under Gandhi's one village one worker plan. On receiving the news of Nokali, Ashutosh Lahiri, the general secretary of Hindu Mahasabha, immediately left for Chandpur. Sayama Prasad Mukherjee, Nirmal Chandra Chatterjee and Pandit Narendranath Das, along with other workers, flew to Komila and entered the affected area with military escorts. A plane was requisitioned and dispatched to the affected area loaded with rice, chira, bread, milk, biscuits, barley and medicines. Other consignments of relief supplies were dispatched by train. The affected people who took refuge in Kolkata were given protection in about 60 centers in the city and suburbs. Sayama Prasad Mukherjee appointed M.S. P.K. Mitter & Co., a Kolkata-based accountancy firm, to control the collection, disbursement and audit of funds contributed by the public. Nirmal Chandra Chatterjee, the acting president of the Bengal Provincial Hindu Mahasabha, Dabendranath Mukherjee, the general secretary, and Najendranath Bose, the assistant secretary, proceeded to the affected areas of Nokali and Tipura. Chatterjee consulted Larkin, the relief commissioner, and considered zonal settlement to be the best method for providing relief and safety, keeping in mind the future resettlement of the victims in their respective villages. Accordingly, relief centers were opened at Bamni under the Raipur Police Station, Dalalbazar under the Lakshmipur Police Station and Paikpara under the Faridganj Police Station. 
M. L. Biswas, the Secretary of the Bengal Provincial Hindu Mahasabha, P. Bardhan, the Medical Secretary, and J. N. Banerjee, the Treasurer, were sent to the other affected areas to set up relief centres. Each of the relief centres was provided with a mobile medical unit under medical officers. Sanat Kumar Roy Chowdhury, the Vice President of the Bengal Provincial Hindu Mahasabha, inaugurated a well-equipped 25-bed hospital at Lakshmipur in the memory of Rajendralal Ray Chowdhury. Dr. Subhod Mitra was placed in charge of the hospital. Nirmal Chandra Chatterjee visited Nokali for a third time and inaugurated a student's home at Bajapati named Shyama Prasad Chatravas. On 20 October, at a meeting of the Chattagram Mahila Sangha, the Chittagong branch of the All India Women's Conference, presided over by Nelly Sengupta, a resolution was passed that the organisation would work for the relief and recovery of the abducted Hindu women in Nokali. The Nokali Relief Committee was formed for the purpose of providing relief and rehabilitation to the affected Hindu women. From 26 October onwards, the committee began to send a group of volunteers led by Ashoka Gupta to Nokali for relief operations on a weekly basis. Their task was to search for abducted Hindu women, provide relief to the refugees at the railway stations, and prepare a list of affected villages based on the accounts of affected villagers. Leela Roy reached Ramganj on 9 December, walking 90 miles on foot from Chamahani. She recovered 1,307 abducted girls. Her organization, the National Services Institute, set up 17 relief camps in Nokali. In December, the Srihatta Mahila Sangha decided to send Karanshashi Deb, Leela Dasgupta, Saralabala Deb and Suhasini Das to Nokali for relief work. The Congress leaders who took the lead in the relief work were Satish Chandra Dasgupta, Durendranath Dutta, Trelakya Chakrabarti and Bishwaranhan Senator Mohandas Gandhi sent four Hindu girls to Sujata Devi, the daughter-in-law of Chittaranjan Das, for rehabilitation. Sujata Devi established the Bangya Pali Sangathan Samiti for the rehabilitation and a free school for the education of the girls. The government of Bengal appointed a special relief commissioner with magisterial powers for the distribution of funds to the refugees. A government order dated 10 February 1947 announced relief of 250 rupees to each affected household for rebuilding and also promised the amount of 200 rupees to each affected weaver, fisherman and peasant for buying a new loom, langle, ox cart or fishing equipment on furnishing proof of loss. The relief workers were surprised at the government decision considering an entire joint family as one single holding or unit and contested that the sum of 250 rupees was greatly inadequate for rebuilding a homestead. Ashoka Gupta met Akhtaruzaman, the additional district magistrate of Nokali, on the 11th of February on behalf of the relief workers and obtained an explanation of the government order so that none of the affected families were left out. Gandhi Peace Mission Mahatma Gandhi played a role in cooling down the situation. He toured the area with his aides, and was instrumental in calming the communal tension. On 18 October, Dr. Bidhan Chandra Roy personally communicated with Mohandas Gandhi, appraising him of the massacre of Hindus in Nokali and the plight of the Hindu women in particular. At the evening prayer, Gandhi mentioned the events in Nokali with concern. He said, if one half of India's humanity was paralyzed, India could never really feel free. He would far rather see India's women trained to wield arms than that they should feel helpless. On 19 October, he decided to visit Nokali. Before leaving, he was interviewed on 6 November by Drive, Amaya Chakravarti at the Abhay Ashram in Sotapur, near Kolkata. After the interview, Dr. Amaya Chakravarti said that the most urgent need of the hour was to rescue the abducted Hindu women who obviously could not be approached by the military because, after being forcefully converted, they were kept under the veil. Gandhi started for Nokali on 6 November and reached Chamuhani the next day. After spending two nights at the residence of Jogendra Majumdar, on 9 November he embarked on his tour of Nokali, barefoot. In the next seven weeks he covered 116 miles and visited 47 villages. He set up his base in a half-burnt house in the village of Srirampur, where he stayed until 1 January. He organized prayer meetings, met local Muslim leaders and tried to win their confidence. Mistrust between Hindus and Muslims continued to exist, and stray incidents of violence occurred even during his stay in Nokali. 
On the evening of 10 November, two persons were reported to have been murdered while returning home after attending Gandhi's evening prayer at Duttapara relief camp. Gandhi's stay in Nokali was resented by the Muslim leadership. On 12 February 1947, while addressing a rally at Komila, A. K. Fazlul Huq said that Gandhi's presence in Nokali had harmed Islam enormously. His presence had created a bitterness between the Hindus and the Muslims. The resentment against Gandhi's stay in Nokali grew day by day. Towards the end of February 1947 it became vulgar. Gandhi's route was deliberately dirtied every day and Muslims began to boycott his meetings. Mohandas Gandhi discontinued his mission halfway and started for Bihar on 2 March 1947 at the request of the Muslim League leaders of Bengal. On 7 April, more than a month after leaving Nokali, Gandhi received telegrams from Congress party workers in Nokali, describing attempts to burn Hindus alive. He responded that the situation in Nokali required that the Hindus should either leave or perish. Refugees The survivors fled Nokali and Tipura in two distinct phases. The first batches of refugees arrived in Kolkata after the massacres and forced conversions. The refugee flow subsided when the government announced relief measures and the relief organizations started working in Nokali and Tipura. However, in March 1947, when the Congress agreed to the partition of India, the relief camps were abandoned and a fresh refugee influx took place in Tripura, Assam and the region that was to become West Bengal. Around 50,000 Hindu refugees who were sheltered in temporary relief camps were subsequently relocated to Guwahati and Assam. Aftermath According to historian Rakesh Batabial, the situation never returned to normal. Sporadic incidents of violence continued and even the police were not spared. In one incident in early November, reported by Frederick Burroughs to Frederick Pethick Lawrence, a senior ICS officer and his police party were attacked three times while escorting Hindu survivors to a refugee camp. The police had to open fire, seven people were killed and ten wounded. The Bengali periodical Deshar Vani published in Nokali quoted a relief worker in the Ramganj police station area who stated that even after four months people had not returned to their houses. Topic. Investigation and cover-up On 29 September 1946, the government of Bengal passed an ordinance prohibiting the press from publishing information regarding any communal disturbances. Any statement, advertisement, notice, news or opinion piece was prohibited from mentioning, the name of the place where the incident occurred, the way in which the victims were killed or injured, the name of the community to which the victim or the perpetrator belonged, and the destruction or desecration of places of worship or shrines, if any. According to Ramesh Chandra Majumdar, the promulgation of the ordinance was the main reason that news of the incidents was not published in the press for a week. The government of Bengal appointed Edward Skinner Simpson, a retired judge, to investigate the incidents in Nokali. His report was covered up by the government. After arriving at Kolkata, on his way to Nokali, Gandhi sought a copy of the report from Prime Minister Surawardi. The latter had initially agreed to provide him with a copy. However, the governor and the secretaries strongly objected to such a proposition and Surawardi declined to hand over the report to Gandhi. A copy of the report was with Mothar, the secretary to Surawardi, who secretly provided a summary to the statesman. The editor published a censored version on 13 November 1946. In the report, Simpson mentioned that for a proper investigation into the happenings in Nokali, at least 50 senior officers would need to be engaged for a period of six months. Nokali on the eve of partition Though the massacres and mass conversions had stopped in October, persecution of the Hindu population continued in Nokali, even during Gandhi's stay there. A week after Gandhi's departure from Nokali, A. V. Thacker wrote from Chandpur on 9 March before leaving for Mumbai that lawlessness was still persisting in Nokali and Tipura. Even five months after the riots in October, there was no sign of its stopping. On the contrary the withdrawal of some of the temporary police stations was encouraging the criminal elements. 
On 19 March 1947, the Muslims held secret meetings in various places. They threatened the Hindus with mass slaughter. The moderate Muslims added that this time they would not be able to protect the Hindus. Ghulam Sarwar convened a huge meeting at Sonapur under the Ramganj police station on 23 March. The day was to be celebrated as Pakistan Day, and the day's program was a general strike. Thousands of Muslims would gather at the meeting, which had been announced in the village markets on 20 March by the beating of the drums. At the announcement of the meeting, the Hindus began to flee, fearing further oppression. The Chumahani railway station became packed with Hindu refugees. The relief workers of the Gandhi Peace Mission requested the district superintendent of police, the additional district magistrate and Abdul Gofran, a minister, not to allow the meeting to be held. The DSP, however, stated that the meeting would be held and the police would adopt adequate security measures. The relief workers reported the matter to Mohandas Gandhi and Surawardi and the latter wired a government order to the Nokali SP on the 22nd of March prohibiting meetings in public places, processions and slogans. However, meetings could be held in private places like madrasas and mosques. Rehan Ali, the officer in charge of the Ramganj police station, said that the meeting would be held at the Amtali ground, which was a private place as it was adjacent to a mosque, and therefore the government order would not be violated. The Muslim League leadership resolved to hold the meeting at any cost. Muslim League leaders Muhammad Urshad and Mujibur Rahman enlisted Minister Abdul Gofran as one of the speakers at the meeting. On 23 March 4,000 to 5,000 Muslims marched in a procession from Ramganj to Kazarkil and then back to Ramganj, chanting slogans, and gathered for the meeting. Addressing the gathering one of the speakers, Yunus Mian Pandit, criticized the Hindus for the practice of untouchability and lack of a purta system and justified an economic boycott on them. On 13 May 1947, William Barrett, the divisional commissioner of the Chittagong Division, submitted a top secret report to P. D. Martin, the additional secretary to the Department of Home, Government of Bengal, detailing the persecution of the Hindus. He reported that groups of Muslims sometimes searched Hindus and took belongings which caught their fancy. In some cases the Hindus had their daily shopping snatched away. Coconuts and betel nuts were forcefully taken from Hindu homesteads. Cattle were stolen. Corrugated iron sheets and timber were taken. Paddy plants were uprooted from Hindu-owned land. Efforts were made to close down Hindu-owned cinemas. Demands were made that the Muslims should have 50% of the loom licenses, even though the vast majority of weavers were Hindus belonging to the yogi caste. Efforts were made to rid the marketplaces of Hindu merchants and shopkeepers. Hindus who had rebuilt their houses were told to leave the district. Hindu complainants at the police station were threatened by Muslims and compelled to agree to their cases being compromised. Hindus were openly addressed as Milans and Kafirs. It was reported on 13 May that a Hindu woman of Dharmapur village had been rescued while being abducted by Muslims. On 16 May abduction was unsuccessfully attempted on two Hindu women. <inaudible> <inaudible> repercussions in Bihar and United Provinces As a reaction to the Nokali riots, riots rocked Bihar towards the end of 1946. Severe violence broke out in Chopra and Saran district between 25 and 28 October. Between 30 October and 7 November, mass communal massacres in Bihar brought partition closer to inevitability. Very soon Patna, Munger and Bagalpur also became the sites of serious turbulence. Begun as a reprisal for the Nokali riot, this rioting was difficult for authorities to deal with because it was spread out over a large area of scattered villages, and the number of casualties was impossible to establish accurately. According to a subsequent statement in the British Parliament, the death toll amounted to 5,000. The statesman's estimate was between 7,500 and 10,000, the Congress party admitted to 2,000, Mr. Jinnah the head of the Muslim League claimed about 30,000. However, by 3 November, the official estimate put the number of deaths at only 445. Writing in 1950, Francis Tucker, who at the time of the violence was General Officer Commanding in Chief, Eastern Command, India, put the Muslim death toll between 7,000 and 8,000. Severe rioting also took place in Garmukteshwar in United Provinces, where a massacre occurred in November 1946 in which 
Hindu pilgrims, at the annual religious fair, set upon and exterminated Muslims, not only on the festival grounds but in the adjacent town. While the police did little or nothing, the deaths were estimated at between 1,000 and 2,000. See also Anti-Hinduism Persecution of Hindus Hashtag Bangladesh Footnotes